Ladies and gents, we are back with another Nottingham Forest scout report and let me talk to you about Ibrahim Sangre. The 25-year-old Ivorian midfielder is being heavily linked to a move to Nottingham Forest this summer and I want to spend some time detailing the career of the PSV midfielder in this video. Of course, if you're new around here in these Nottingham Forest scout reports, what we do is we take the target player, give a bit of background on their career thus far and what they're about as a player and try and fit them into this Nottingham Forest side. So if you do enjoy that kind of stuff, don't forget to drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel and let's start talking about Ibrahim Sangare. Ibrahim Sangre was born in December of 1995 in Kumasi, which is a suburb of Abidjan, the largest and capital city of the Ivory Coast, and he would spend the majority of his youth career playing for sides in his home country. And in 2016, Sangre would make a big move across to Europe, moving to France to link up with the second team of Toulouse, and he would spend his first couple of seasons in Toulouse playing for both their first team and their second team. His debut for the first team would come in a nil draw in October of 2016 against fellow French side Angers and he would go on to make 80 appearances for the first team in league play registering eight goals and assists over the course of his Toulouse career and this would definitely be when the cult of Sangare began to develop in his early days at Toulouse he really developed a cult following amongst those who are more interested in stats and analytics in football his defensive numbers were off the chart and he looked like a really promising midfield prospect and despite impressing during his time in France it would be quite a surprise club who would come in for his signature Dutch Giants PSV who would sign him in 2020 for 8 million euros and this is where he's been for the last three seasons. And the move to PSV was a bit of a culture shock for Sangre. He went from playing in a league side in Toulouse who were averaging around 45% possession during his final season playing for the French side to obviously the Dutch Giants, one of the biggest clubs in the Netherlands in the form of PSV, who last season were averaging 55% possession in their matches. And this shift in tactical approaches really allowed him to express himself as a player, become a lot more progressive in his passing, become a lot more of a ball carrier, allow him to succeed with his dribbling whilst also maintaining that elite defensive output that really put him on the map in the first place. Being in the top 25% of midfielders in the end of his last season for combined tackles and interceptions whilst also completing one and a half dribbles per 90, getting the ball into the final third eight times per 90 and contributing five goals and one assist for PSV this season. And he's adapted brilliantly to a more possession-based system in the Netherlands. So I want to spend some time talking about that in a little bit of detail and how he's going to transition into this Nottingham Forest side should he join us this summer and heading into next season. So on the board, we've got the 3-5-2, 5-3-2 kind of shape that we were using for our promotion season under Steve Cooper at the beginning of this season and towards the back end of the season as well. It really came back into fashion for us towards the end of the season. And I definitely think there's going to be a home in this midfield for Ibrahim Sangru. Whether we stick to this, whether we look to move back towards a more traditional four at the back system like this, like a 4-2-3-1. I think either way, there's going to be a home for him in this side. The big thing you notice with Sangre is he's absolutely massive and he covers so much ground in his matches for PSV. His defensive output, as I mentioned throughout this video, has been something that's been very high throughout his career, but you really see it when you watch him in person. He is someone who is so able to just cover large amounts of ground great recovery pace great at recovering possession quickly after a turnover and I think that's a really huge asset to a team like us who aren't necessarily the best at maintaining possession having someone who can step out and win the ball back is obviously excellent another thing you get with Sangre is he's extremely comfortable receiving the ball in tight spaces there's often times for PSV where he is the guy coming to receive the ball off the back line the opposition's putting pressure on him and he is fantastic at just sort of wriggling that pressure and releasing the ball to a teammate through either a really expansive progressive pass or just sort of being neat and tidy in his possession switching over to the fullback as they're making their run forward. From what I've seen from him he's mainly been occupying more central positions like this but I wouldn't be surprised if he was able to play out in a wide central midfield 
position like in a 4-3-3 or in the 4-4-2 diamond like we were using for stretches last season as long as he's got someone providing the width down that side for him. I think that because he's got a really expansive range of passing, of course, he's really good with the ball at his feet, like I mentioned there, really good receiving the ball uh, in tight positions and wriggling free from pressure. And I think as well, he's got the engine to get himself up and down the pitch as well. Now, of course, Forest last season were the team in the Premier League who averaged the lowest possession in their matches. And there have been cries from the fans. I think Steve Cooper's even admitted it himself that he wants ideally to be playing a lot more ball dominant football. He wants to be able to retain possession a lot better than we have done this season where we've mainly been hitting teams very quickly on the break. And whilst I think we play pretty good football when we do that, I think we break quite quickly. Having a midfielder of the profile of Sangre, I think enables us to retain possession a lot more. He's a player who's very comfortable, of course, on the ball, very comfortable receiving the ball from deep positions, such as off the back line like this. He's very comfortable at spreading play over to wing backs, over to full backs. He's also very good at making these line breaking passes and getting the ball forward and progressing play. And he's a very safe player in possession. So I overall think that he'll be a good fit to this team if we're looking to move towards especially a more possession-based system. But of course, I think it's important to also remember we're going to get quite a lot of defensive output in that midfield from Sangre. Adding him into this team will give us that little bit more bite in midfield. And at the very least, that's something that we were quite desperately lacking during times last season, whether it was a coaching decision or simply the personnel available. We desperately lacked a, a bite in the midfield, someone who can go out, step out and engage the opposition and turn over possession. And that is exactly the kind of player Sangre is. He's fantastic at pressing, he's fantastic at engaging the opposition. I think at the very least, that's the kind of midfielder you get in. And if Cooper really takes the reins off him, you're getting a midfielder who's very comfortable stepping forward, progressing play and being aggressive front-footed player. So overall, as you'd expect from what I've been saying in this video, I'm very excited by the prospective signing of Ibrahim Sangre. The fee itself, I don't actually think is that bad. It's rumored to be in the region of 30 million pounds, or you might potentially have a release clause in that region. And if that's the case, I think that's a very reasonable fee to be paying for a Premier League side to be acquiring one of the best defensive midfielders outside of Europe's top five leagues. Certainly one of the best coming out of the air divisie. Of course, there will be questions over his adaptation from a weaker league to a stronger league, coming into a team that was pretty poor for the majority of last season. But overall, I think he'll come in and be a very positive signing should he join. Sangare gets an A from me in terms of grading. I think it's almost the perfect signing. I don't really see too many downsides to a player of his caliber. Of course though, let me know your thoughts on Sangre down in that comment section below this video. I'd love to know what you think of the Ivorian midfielder. And whilst you're down there, don't forget to drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a single scout report. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I will catch you later.